Hey friends and everyone. This is Amy. I'm Amy and I am going live today to tell the story I've been meaning to tell for a long time. And it's about food and fear and pleasure. So my whole life changed last May when I was getting ready to teach a workshop on fear. And also it was kind of like getting deep into the pandemic. And I was also kind of struggling with realizing that uh, I was eating so fast. I just happened to be sitting next to this. I, I This is totally random that I'm sitting here, but I made myself this sign. I don't know if you can read it. Maybe you could read it if it were backwards. Nope, that's something else. Anyway, what it says is almost snarfed again. I made this sign for myself because I was like, every time I eat, I miss it. I'm like shoving my food down. And that happened for me during the pandemic. Food became like my best friend. I loved it. I couldn't wait until my next meal. And I just was eating everything so fast, so much and so fast. And I just knew that something was wrong. Almost snarfed again. So I made myself this sign and I put it up in my kitchen. So when I was eating, I would remember to slow down. Now, what happened was that I was also teaching this workshop on fear and I went for this walk with a friend of mine and we were taught, he's a really smart guy and we were talking about fear and his thing, his thing was that our limbic systems, our brains are wired for fear. He said in our reptilian brain, in the amygdala, the limbic system, 80% of the neurons are wired for threat. So when we, this is especially social, when we go into a new environment, we're sensing for threat. Am I safe? And only 20% of the neurons in the amygdala, our first responder limbic system in our brain, the reptile brain, sense for pleasure or for, yeah, for pleasure or reward is what he called it. So things like, where's the warmth or who's a nice person? We're actually more tuned into threat and danger and fear. So this got me thinking a lot. Like, are we all in fear all the time? And I just started watching myself. I just wondered like, Am I in fear all the time and I've just learned how to manage it 80% of the time? 80, is it 80% of me in fear? And the place, one place that I really noticed it was around eating. That this snarfing, the way that I was eating so fast, uh, had f a feeling of fear underneath it. I was afraid that of something but it just felt like the eating was like like there's not enough or something but i could feel that like my eating was out of fear and i was just kind of like a little bit blown away by this that i was eating out of fear and then several things happened but i won't tell you that whole story what wound up happening was that i learned i retrained myself to eat for pleasure I decided that like, I didn't want to snarf anymore. I didn't want to be eating out of fear. There was no reason for me to be eating out of fear. I wanted to enjoy my food. So I decided to tweak the way I ate. I gave myself smaller portions. I took away all distractions. I didn't let myself multitask while I ate. I didn't let myself have my phone, my computer, a book. And I didn't even really want to be talking to anybody while I ate. So, uh, so I started eating for pleasure. I started really tasting my food. I even started listening to the sound of my teeth connecting with the food. I started to be more aware of my body as I was eating and if I was in pleasure with my physicality. I started letting myself mm, hum and, and sound and even move as I tasted my food and, and eating became a little bit of a dance. And what happened was that I wound up losing 20 pounds. I lost, I think it was really like 17 or 18 pounds. And I didn't even know that I had that weight to lose. Like I just thought that my body was my body. I loved my body. I loved how it was, I danced, everything. But 
as soon as I started eating for pleasure, um, like all of a sudden, like all of this extra weight started disappearing. And I went back to like what I weighed in high school. And I didn't even, I didn't, it's not that I didn't want it. I just didn't think it was possible. And I never would have tried. I didn't ever diet or anything. All I did, the only change I made was becoming aware of my fear and eating from pleasure, eating from a place of pleasure, of really wanting to taste my food, really appreciating my food, really enjoying my food, getting more attuned to all the tastes and flavors in the food, and expressing my joy in eating. Mm. So that's just one of the very big parts that made me feel like I want to do pleasure boot camp. I want to eat with people in this pleasure state. Uh, I never want to miss another meal. I realize like every meal is such a joy. And what was happening is I traded in quantity for quality. And my meals now are smaller but last longer. And they're so delicious. I don't need to eat as much. I don't need to snarf it all down. I don't need to worry. There will still be more food for me later. So anyway, I've just been meaning to tell this story for quite a long time about my weight loss. A lot of people have noticed it and commented on it. And it was all about fear and pleasure. So there's my story. Eating for pleasure. Amazing just absolutely amazing, life-changing. If you're curious about it, uh, I'd love to have you join me for Pleasure Boot Camp. We're going to be definitely focusing on food and our relationship to food and eating, pleasure, our relationship to pleasure, breath, our relationship to breath and pleasure and movement, our relationship to movement and pleasure and creativity and our relationship to creativity and pleasure. And how can we bring less fear to all these things or notice the fear and move towards pleasure. I think that those might be opposites, fear and pleasure. All right, if you're curious at all, definitely, at least if you, even if you're not curious, come to my inner critic workshop tomorrow. I wish I had mine here, but we're gonna be making little inner critics. Um, I can imagine, just pretend that this is my inner critic right now. Let's say I made it, I could like put some, <laughs> you can just put some eyes on a candle and you've got a critic. Hey, can you see those eyes? Hey. <laughs> For some reason, I always want my critic to say, hey. But um, yeah, it's great to get the critic out of your blind spot, out of your head, and out here where you can just see a representation of it. I can give it a name like Harry, Harry Mouth. Hey, Harry Mouth. Or um, Joe, or Mini Puss, or something like that. It's great. It's great to name your critic. It's great to have a critic. It's great to have a representation of your critic. And ultimately, we can get the critic working for us. So please, tomorrow, it's going to be right at this time from 5.30 to 7. We are going to be doing an inner critic, free externalizing the inner critic workshop where uh, it's going to be a party. It's going to be an inner critic party. We've got some ACDC. I'm so happy about the ACDC. And uh, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to meeting all of your critics. If you can come, please bring your critics and uh, they can have a little party of their own. All right. Peace out, everyone. Sending love to everyone.